Wojciech Witold Jaruzelski Polish, Vijate, Ex Vite Jaruzelisk I Listen, 6 July 1923 to 25 May 2014 was a Polish military officer and politician. He was first secretary of the Polish United Workers' Party from 1981 to 1989, and as such was the last leader of the People's Republic of Poland. He also served as Prime Minister from 1981 to 1985 and the country's Head of State from 1985 to 1990 titled as Chairman of the Council of State from 1985 to 1989 and as President from 1989 to 1990. He was also the last Commander-in-Chief of the Polish People's Army LWP. He resigned after the Polish Round Table Agreement in 1989, which led to democratic elections in Poland. Topic. Early life Wojciech Witold Jaruzelski was born on 6 July 1923 in Kuro, into a family of Polish gentry. He was the son of Wanda Nezaremba and Władysław Mieczysław Jaruzelski, a Czech-educated agronomist and volunteered soldier who fought in the war against Soviet Russia in 1920 and was raised on the family estate near Wysoki in the vicinity of Bialystok. From 1933 until September 1939, he was educated in a Catholic school in Warsaw where Jaruzelski received strict religious education. World War II commenced on 1 September 1939 with the invasion of Poland by Germany, aided by the Soviet invasion of Poland 16 days later. These resulted in the complete defeat of Poland by October, and a partition between Soviet and German zones of control. Jaruzelski and his family fled to Lithuania and stayed with some friends there. However, a few months later, after Lithuania and the other Baltic states were forcibly incorporated into the Soviet Union, Jaruzelski and his family were captured by the Red Army and deported to Siberia. In June 1941, Jaruzelski and his family were deprived of all the valuable possessions and delivered the decision of deportation by several armed soldiers in Lithuanian and Polish. In the railway station, Jaruzelski was separated from his father, who was sent directly to a labor camp. Jaruzelski and his mother were sent to Bisk, Altai Krai, spending more than one month on the way. After that, Jaruzelski walked for 180 kilometers to Tarachik where he was responsible for forest cleaning. During his labor work he was stricken with snow blindness and suffered permanent damage to his eyes as well as his back. His eye condition forced him to wear dark sunglasses most of the time for the rest of his life, which became his trademark. Jaruzelski's father died in June 4, 1942 from dysentery. His mother and sister survived the war. His mother died in 1966. Topic. Military career Jaruzelski was selected by the Soviet authorities for enrollment into the Soviet Officer Training School. During his time in the Kazakh Republic, Jaruzelski wanted to join the non-Soviet controlled Polish exile army led by Władysław Anders, but in 1943, by which time the Soviet Union was fighting in Europe against Germany in the Eastern Front, he joined the Polish army units being formed under Soviet command. He served in this Soviet-controlled First Polish Army during the war. He participated in the 1945 Soviet military takeover of Warsaw and the Battle of Berlin. By the time the war ended that year, he had gained the rank of lieutenant. He further credited himself in Soviet eyes by engaging in combat against the non communist Polish Home Army. From 1945 to 1947, after the end of the war, Jaruzelski graduated from the Polish Higher Infantry School, followed by graduation from the General Staff Academy. He joined Poland's Communist Party, the Polish United Workers' Party, in 1948 and became an informant for the Soviet-supervised Main Directorate of Information of the Polish Army using the cover name Volski. In the initial post-war years, he was among those who fought the Polish anti-communists, cursed soldiers, in the Sweetorkrzyski region. A BBC News profile of Jaruzelski states that his career took off after the departure from Poland in 1956 of the Soviet Field Marshal, Konstantin Rokosowski, who had been Poland's commander-in-chief and minister of defense. 
Jaruzelski became the chief political officer of the Polish Armed Forces in 1960, its chief of staff in 1964, and Polish Minister of Defense in 1968, four years after he was elected to be a member of the Central Committee of the Polish United Workers' Party. He benefited from the anti Semitic campaign in the army in the 1960s, during which more than 1,000 Jewish officers were demoted or expelled. Even the non Jewish Minister of Defense, Marshal Marian Spichalski, was persecuted. Jaruzelski obtained his post. In August 1968 General Jaruzelski as the Defense Minister ordered the Second Army under General Florian Sawicki of the LWP to invade Czechoslovakia, resulting in military occupation of northern Czechoslovakia until the 11th of November 1968 when under his orders and agreements with the Soviet Union his Polish troops were withdrawn and replaced by the Soviet Army. In 1970, he was involved in the successful plot against Władysław Gomułka, which led to the appointment of Edward Gierek as General Secretary of the Polish United Workers' Party. There is some question whether he took part in organizing the brutal suppression of striking workers, or whether his orders to the communist military led to massacres in the coastal cities of Gdańsk, Gdynia, Elblag and Szczecin. As Minister of Defense General Jaruzelski was ultimately responsible for 27,000 troops used against unarmed civilians. He claims that he was circumvented, which is why he never apologized for his involvement, but he had an option of resigning open to him, especially after the resignation of Foreign Minister Adam Rupaki, and Jaruzelski did not. Jaruzelski became a candidate member for the Politburo of the Polish United Workers' Party, the chief executive body of the party, obtaining full membership the following year. <laughs> <laughs> Leader of the Polish military government On the 11th of February 1981, Jaruzelski was named chairman of the Council of Ministers, Prime Minister. On the 18th of October, Stanislaw Kania was ousted as first secretary of the Central Committee of the Polish United Workers' Party after a listening device recorded him criticizing the Soviet leadership. Jaruzelski was elected his successor, becoming the only professional soldier to become leader of a ruling European Communist Party. A fortnight after taking power, Jaruzelski met with Solidarity head Lech Walesa and Catholic Bishop Józef Glemp, and hinted that he wanted to bring the Church and the Union into a sort of coalition government. However, his intention was to crush Solidarity. As early as September, while he was still merely Prime Minister, he met with his aides to find an excuse to impose martial law. On 13 December, citing purported recordings of Solidarity leaders planning a coup, Jaruzelski organized his own coup by proclaiming martial law. A military council of national salvation was formed, with Jaruzelski as chairman. A BBC News profile of Jaruzelski contends that the establishment of martial law was an attempt to suppress the Solidarity movement. According to Jaruzelski, martial law was necessary to avoid a Soviet invasion. In a May 1992 interview with Der Spiegel, Jaruzelski said, Given the strategic logic of the time, I probably would have acted the same way if I had been a Soviet general. At that time, Soviet political and strategic interests were threatened. However, at a press conference in September 1997 Viktor Kulikov, former Supreme Commander of Warsaw Pact Forces, denied that the Soviet Union had either threatened or intended to intervene. According to Politburo minutes from 10 December 1981, Yuri Andropov stated, We do not intend to introduce troops into Poland. That is the proper position, and we must adhere to it until the end. I don't know how things will turn out in Poland, but even if Poland falls under the control of solidarity, that's the way it will be. Jaruzelski also claimed in 1997 that Washington had given him a green light stating that he had sent Eugenius Molchik to confer with Vice President George H. W. Bush and Bush had agreed with Molchik that martial law was the lesser of two evils. Whether this meeting with the American Vice President occurred is disputed. While it is erroneously cited, Harvard historian Mark Kramer has pointed out that no documents support Jaruzelski's claim. Jaruzelski was chiefly responsible for the imposition of martial law in Poland on the 13th of December 1981 in an attempt to crush the pro-democracy movements, which included Solidarity, the first non-communist trade union in Warsaw Pact history. 
Subsequent years saw his government and its internal security forces censor, persecute, and jail thousands of journalists and opposition activists without charge. Others lost their lives during these same events. The resulting socio economic crisis led to the rationing of basic foods such as sugar, milk, and meat, as well as materials such as gasoline and consumer products, while the median income of the population fell by as much as 10%. During Jaruzelski's rule from 1981 to 1989, around 300,000 people left the country. Historical evidence released under Russian President Boris Yeltsin has been brought to light indicating that the Soviet Union did not plan to invade Poland. In fact, Jaruzelski actually tried to persuade the Soviets to invade Poland in order to support martial law, only to be sternly turned down. This left the solidarity problem to be sorted out by the Polish government see also Soviet reaction to the Polish crisis of 1980–1981. However, the exact plans of the Soviet Union at that time have never been determined. Jaruzelski, however, has justified cracking down by alleging that the threat of Soviet intervention was quite likely had he not dealt with solidarity internally. This question, as well as many other facts about Poland in the years 1945–1989, are presently under the investigation of government historians at the Institute of National Remembrance Institute Pamici Narodowe, IPN, whose publications reveal facts from the Communist Era archives Additionally, there are numerous confirmations from Czech Army officers of the time speaking of Operation Kirkinoz, plan of armed invasion of Poland, because of which many units of the Czechoslovak People's Army were stationed on highest alert, ready for deployment within hours. In 1982, he helped reorganize the Front of National Unity, the organization the Communists used to manage their satellite parties, as the Patriotic Movement for National Rebirth. In 1985, Jerusalem Jaruzelski resigned as Prime Minister and Defence Minister and became the Chairman of the Polish Council of State—a post equivalent to that of Head of State of Poland. However, his power centred on and firmly entrenched in his coterie of LWP generals and lower ranks officers of the Polish Communist Army. Presidency The policies of Mikhail Gorbachev stimulated political reform in Poland. By the close of its 10th plenary meeting in December 1988, the Polish United Workers' Party was forced by spreading labor unrest to approach leaders of solidarity for talks. From the 6th of February to the 15th of April 1989, negotiations were held between 13 working groups during 94 sessions of the roundtable talks. These negotiations radically altered the shape of the Polish government and society, and resulted in an agreement which stated that a great degree of political power would be given to a newly created bicameral legislature. It also restored a post of president to act as head of state and chief executive. Solidarity was also declared a legal organization. During the ensuing partially free elections, the communists and their allies were allocated 65% of the seats in the same. Solidarity won all the remaining elected seats, and 99 out of the 100 seats in the fully elected Senate were also won by Solidarity-backed candidates. Amid such a crushing defeat, there were fears Jaruzelski would annul the results. However, he allowed them to stand. Jaruzelski was elected by Parliament to the position of President. He was the only candidate. Jaruzelski was unsuccessful in convincing Lech Walesa to include Solidarity in a grand coalition. With the Communists. He resigned as first secretary of the PZPR on 29 July 1989. Mieczysław Rakowski succeeded him as party leader. The Communists initially intended to give Solidarity a few token cabinet posts for the sake of appearances. However, Walesa persuaded the Communists' two allied parties, the United People's Party ZSL and the Alliance of Democrats SD, to break their alliance with the PZPR. Accepting that he would have to appoint a Solidarity member as Prime Minister, Jaruzelski then asked Walesa to select three candidates, one of whom he would ask to form a government. Ultimately, Tadeusz Mazowiecki, who had helped organize the roundtable talks, was selected as first non-communist Prime Minister of an Eastern Bloc country in four decades. Jaruzelski resigned as president in 1990. He was succeeded by Walesa, who had won the presidential election on 9 December. 
On 31 January 1991, General Jaruzelski retired from the army. After retirement In October 1994, while attending a book-selling activity in Wrocław Jaruzelski was attacked by a male pensioner with a stone and had his jaw injured, after which he was sent to a hospital to receive surgery. The man had been arrested in prison during the martial law period. Later, the man was sentenced two years and fined 200 zloty. In an interview in 2001, Jaruzelski said that he believed communism failed, and that he was now a social democrat. He also announced his support for then-President Alexander Kwasniewski, as well as future Prime Minister Leszek Miller. Both Kwasniewski and Miller were members of the Democratic Left Alliance, the Social Democratic Party that includes most of the remains of the PUWP. In May 2005, Russian President Vladimir Putin awarded a medal commemorating the 60th anniversary of victory over Nazi Germany to Jaruzelski. Other former leaders awarded the medal include former Romanian King Michael I. Czech President Václav Klaus criticized this step, claiming that Jaruzelski was a symbol of the Warsaw Pact invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968. Jaruzelski said that he had apologized and that the decision on the August 1968 invasion had been a great political and moral mistake. On 28 March 2006, Jaruzelski was awarded a Siberian Exiles Cross by Polish President Lech Kaczynski. However, after making this fact public Kaczynski claimed that this was a mistake and blamed the bureaucracy for giving him a document containing 1293 names without notifying him of Jaruzelski's presence within it. After this statement, Jaruzelski returned the cross. On 31 March 2006, the Institute of National Remembrance IPN charged him with committing communist crimes, mainly the creation of a criminal military organization with the aim of carrying out criminal acts mostly concerned with the illegal imprisonment of people. A second charge involved inciting state ministers to commit acts beyond their competence. Jaruzelski evaded most court appearances, citing poor health. In December 2010, Jaruzelski suffered from severe pneumonia, and in March 2011, he was diagnosed with lymphoma. <laughs> Death Jaruzelski died on 25 May 2014, in a Warsaw hospital after suffering a stroke earlier that month. Prior to his death, he reportedly requested last rites by a Catholic priest. President Bronislaw Komarovsky and former presidents Lech Walesa and Aleksandr Kwasniewski as well as hundreds of other Poles attended his funeral mass at the Field Cathedral of the Polish Army in Warsaw on 30 May. Walesa and Komarovsky, who were among the thousands imprisoned during the crackdown on Solidarity in 1981, both stated that judgment against Jaruzelski would be left to God. Jaruzelski was then cremated and buried with full military honors at Powiski Military Cemetery in Warsaw, near the grave of Bolesław Barut, the first communist leader of Poland after World War II. The decision to bury Jaruzelski at Powiski, the resting place of Polish soldiers killed defending their country since the early 19th century, resulted in protests. <laughs> Personal life Jaruzelski married Barbara Helena Jaruzelska 1931 May 2017 in 1961. They had a daughter, Monica who was born on the 11th of August 1963. Monica has a son, Gustav. In 2014, his wife Barbara threatened to file for divorce, saying she had caught his nurse Dorota in a compromising position with him. Legacy. The BBC reported in 2001 that, for some Poles, particularly the Solidarity Generation, he is little short of a traitor. Even comparing his philosophy of, a strong Poland within a Soviet-dominated bloc, to Vidkun Quisling's philosophy of a similar status for Norway within the Nazi-controlled hemisphere. Meanwhile, opinion polls as of 15 May 2001 suggested that a majority of the Polish people were open to agreeing with his explanation that martial law was implemented to forestall a Soviet invasion. Available documents indicate that Jaruzelski actually lobbied for Soviet intervention. In interviews in Russian media Gazeta for example, he has been presented as the harbinger of Poland's democracy. 
Croatian writer Slavenka Draculic described Jaruzelski as a tragic believer in communism who made a pact with the devil in good faith. Topic written works Rosnitz Simadras English translation, To Differ Wisely 1999, Bike Mos to Astotni Sloo Pesched Sadam English translation, It May Be the Last Word Explanations Given in the Court 2008. Topic honors and awards Topic References Topic Bibliography Berger, Manfred E. Jaruzelski, Traitor or Patriot? London, Hutchinson, 1990. ISBN 0091744660 Berger, Manfred E., and Zbigniew Bauer. Jaruzelski. Krakow, Oficina Krakowia, 1991. ISBN 8385104216 Lebeds, Leopold. Poland under Jaruzelski, a comprehensive sourcebook on Poland during and after martial law. New York, Scribner, 1984. ISBN 0684181169 Palinka, Anton. Politics of the Lesser Evil, Leadership, Democracy, and Jaruzelski's Poland. New Brunswick, NJ, Transaction Publishers, 1999. ISBN 1560003677 Swidlicki, Andre. Political Trials in Poland, 1981-1986. London, Krum Helm, 1988. ISBN 0709944446 Wescheler, Lawrence. The Passion of Poland, From Solidarity Through the State of War. New York, Pantheon Books, 1982. ISBN 0394722868 Janczyn, Lu. Jaruzelski, The Shaker of Polish History. Beijing, Shijiezishi, 2016 ISBN 9781501252299 External links Official website Jaruzelski, Selected Speeches Marek Jan Chodakovich, December 12, 2006, The Jaruzelski Case, The Ascent of Agent Volsky, World Politics Review.